I'm Tony Manscolo of Tony and Guy, talking about my greatest inspiration for real business and orange. Tony Mascolo arrived in England from Italy in 1956 at the age of 14. By 16, he was the manager of a large hairdressing salon. By 21, he'd opened the first Tony and Guy salon in Clapham with his brother. They launched the first hairdressing academy in the 70s and a professional product line in the 80s. Today, the business turns over 175 million a year with 225 salons dotted across the country, 150 worldwide, and a total of 8,000 employees. Tony was awarded an OBE for his services to hairdressing last year. He joined us in London to talk about creating a global brand. Tony, thank you for joining us today. Um, now you were doing perms by 11, you were manager of a salon by 16. What made you set up the first Tony and Guy salon in the 60s? Well, uh, I think it was a combination of different things. I mean, uh, we, I was very successful working in um, Victoria Street. Um, I had actually invited to go to Downing Street at the age of uh, 17 and a half. I was doing Baba Council. I was enjoying and making a lot of money. Unfortunately, my mother died um, at the age of 45. That was a complete um, uh, shock to me. I mean, I was totally suicidal, really, to tell you the truth. I was very, very close to her because the simple reason, because you, come, you couldn't speak a lot of English, was very delicate. Everywhere I took her out, they all thought she was my girlfriend. She looked so young, so, uh, uh, and I felt uh, just, I don't know, that, um, there was nothing I could do. So it was uh, a time where um, my father pulled us, all of us together. My younger brother, Guy, had, was working locally where we lived in the Clapham area. And uh, I'd worked in that area before when I was 16. And then we decided to um, uh, open our first salon. It was lucky for us because the owner uh, uh, gave us a 21-year lease with no premium and said, just pay me 20 pound a week, which was uh, exaggerated uh, rent. Uh, if you think in those days, 12 pound a week would, uh, would be a, a civil servant uh, sort of salary. It was maybe 10 times what we should be paying, but it was all inclusive. Luckily for us, he gave us a 21 year lease with the same rent. So um, I hated it at the beginning because I came from the West End and Sunderland, I'm mean, in Clapham and it was not, I didn't like it. But I felt for the sake of the family to do together, we start um, uh, the first uh, salon. And, and then we called it Tony and Guy. And my name, is, they used to call me Tony. My real name is Giuseppe Guy, was Gaetano, it was too long. Can you imagine Giuseppe Gaetano? So they called me Tony and I thought I'll change the the white one I make him more Italian. And the guy, they called him Guy, so Tony and Guy. In those days it was guys and dolls and, you know, sort of trendy mm. type of names like that. And he rhymed really well. Was our two names that we were known and we started the first Tony and Guy. You set up the business with your brother Guy, then your two younger brothers joined the business and now your own children are involved yes. in it too. What's been the biggest challenge of running a family business? Well, you know, with the brothers, uh, we had uh, 40 years together. It was uh, exciting in every way. Uh, it was, um, we worked really, really well together. Uh, it was, um, we achieved something was absolutely incredible. Uh, but like everything comes a time when you have to move on. Everyone has their own family and they built up. But I think what happened with, the, with us that is my younger brother wanted to move to America because he was very close to the younger one. So they they grown up together and he felt that that was his future. And because he, we wanted to go to the next step, we then did a demerger where Anthony uh, wanted to join, saw America as a bigger opportunity. So Anthony, Bruno and Guy had the TG company, which uh, came to global. And plus they kept turning up for the USA. And uh, later on, uh, they thought that would be better for them to have Canada and South America. 
and I retained the Tony and Guy for the rest of, of the world and the UK and the franchising and everything else. And um, so at that point then I had to start all over again. My daughter has been in the business since she was eight, nine years old herself. Uh, she's an incredible artist, she's creative. She has got all the talents in, um, uh, to create a new collection, photography, so she helped to bring the company to another level. So obviously you were surrounded by all these family members, but who have you actually turned to for advice along the way? Well, when I first started, I had a, um, he was a major in the uh, British Army. His name was Jack Fick. He was also my insurer, insurer and he also would help me about pensions and so on. We tried to create a pension school fees, didn't exist. So I invented this school fees um, type of thing. So every two years I would get a bundle of money, which was tax free, and not pay tax on it and pay my, um, my fees and so on. So he, together we helped that, and he used to help me with a lot of things. At the beginning, uh, he spoke Italian beautifully. He uh, insures to all the coffee bar in, in London. He, was, he used to stay, come to dinner, stay till 11 o'clock, because he used to come and sell me the insurance in the evening. I got to like him like if he was my second father. And to tell you the truth, I had a problem. I would phone him up and he would say, uh, OK, uh, pen and pencil um, <laughs> on the right hand side without prejudice, dear madam. <laughs> and they dictated the letter to me. And I felt so comfortable, so, I, so relaxed. I had a problem, Mr. Fick would help me. Yeah. Have you been inspired by any other entrepreneurs? The one that I always felt, uh, uh, like a million other people, feel is a great entrepreneur is Richard Branson. But I can't say I was totally inspired by him, I just admired him. Uh, the other one is when I was a little boy uh, in Italy, at the age of uh, 10, I started reading the uh, diary of Julius Caesar in Latin. And I used to, quite unusual for a young kid to get into these diaries in Latin and I enjoy every minute of it, his battles, his strategy, how he could uh, confront it with any possibility, he could create a winning situation. And I've never forgotten that. And uh, that, you know, as, you, as a kid, it, it sticks in your mind and I, I feel, well, I don't need anything else once I got the best man in the globe mm. to ever inspire you. I think probably he has inspired me tremendously. And as an entrepreneur, you know, you have that situation of having that strength. I mean, I would say that some of the things are important for entrepreneurs. Uh, obviously, the first thing is, uh, is to have uh, courage, have absolutely no fear of what you're doing. That is what part of an entrepreneur is, to uh, set targets which almost look impossible to anybody else have the big picture, but you know that it's possible. And I suppose the third leg is to encourage, motivate, excite, and help and your team to be a winning team, to make sure that they can see, like you, that we don't have to fear. Mm. Uh, I've never really gone in any business thinking about failure. I mean, never. I, I mean, naturally, I don't. You ask me, open that salon, go into the adventure, I just think, oh, yeah, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. It's great. My daughter is exactly the same way. And I think if you ask me what is the quality of uh, entrepreneurs, that's it. Mm. What are you doing to help the next generation of entrepreneurs? I do that every second of the day. I mean, I'm always with young people. Uh, to try and give them the big picture, to encourage them, to energize them, to show them the opportunities they have. Whichever, whatever I am, I still work in the salon. So on, um, on Saturday I'll be in Sloan Square and I will probably have my uh, sandwich with all my uh, juniors and it might be hot and horrible in there, <laughs> but if it's bad for them, I should uh, have the same thing. I should not be treated any different. No one will know who I am. A client comes in, they go respect me for my haircut, and I will get to that level, their own level. I'm very humble in my own way, uh, and, uh, and I like to, them to feel that 
you know, doing that, you can achieve the ultimate. Mm. So yeah. can you still do a perm? I can still do a perm, I <laughs> can st still cut, and I can still give you the best haircut that you ever had. <laughs> Great, thank you very much for your time My today, pleasure. Tony. Thank you.